moron! <laughs> hey, moron! Duh! <laughs> look, look at me! I'm the woo water boy, duh! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods on this week number four Sunday. And you know, this is, it's good that we actually have some time to rest. We're in bad shape right now, um, but we have hope, of course. What we have to do is we have to watch. It's not only what we do, it's also what other teams do. But before we get into those games and stuff, we got to deal with Cowboys news first. This is kind of insane cray-cray. I've watched this a couple of times, and I'm trying to understand um, in this, how this is a $20,000 fine. I understand, you know, lowering the head and then spearing a player and everything else. But as a receiver, you kind of are trying to protect yourself when you know you're about to get hit. Now, I want to show you this because this to me is, are you kidding me, NFL? If you were, if this is a penalty, you could find players on every team every single week. But just CeeDee Lamb, watch this. So he gets the catch. Let, let's go back again. That was it. That was literally it. CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb knows he's about to get lit up. He lowers his head and tries to gather his body to absorb the blow. Look at this. He didn't make helmet to helmet contact. He hit the guy in the shoulder pad. He's trying to cover up the ball. So it, it, are you, instead of trying to cover up and absorb the blow, what is he supposed to stand up there so he gets his bell rung? Come on, NFL. This is, look at this. Come on. Come on. You're telling me that? That is a $20,000 fine? Bro. Bro. That, that's some bull, bull crap there. All right. Now, we've already all known this, but let's get Ian Rappaport to try and confirm this this morning. Rich, you mentioned the high ankle sprain for Micah Parsons. Saw him carted off right there, was in considerable pain, had an MRI the day after the game, revealed the high ankle sprain. My understanding is he is going to be out for seven to ten days, then reevaluated. Does not mean that he's necessarily coming right back after that. So Parsons is expected to miss the week five game against the Steelers. I would say likely misses week six as well. The schedule is in their favor. They have a bye after that. So there's a pretty decent chance that Micah Parsons is back by week eight. They also could be without another one of their, or are going to be, uh, without another one of their star defenders, Demarcus Lawrence, mm -hmm. out at least four weeks with a mid-foot sprain. My understanding is he likely will be placed on injured reserve, so should be without two of their top defenders, Rich, for a couple of weeks. Rich, you mentioned the high ankle sprain. There you go. So, we could be going through Murderer's Row right now. Murderer's Row without two of our best defensive players. And that doesn't necessarily bode well, but again, the schedule does work with us. Having, you know, being off today, at least we had, you know, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday. We got a couple extra days of rest. We do have the bye week coming up in a couple of weeks, so maybe it won't be as bad there. Maybe we get guys who get the opportunity to step up and show us something. But, you know, as we go around the NFL, when you look at September, we still really don't know what teams are. 
So, for example, we've got the New Orleans versus the Atlanta Falcons, okay? New Orleans, of course, came out like gangbusters, kicked our teeth in and looked great, and then the Eagles shut down that offense. So, do we know if Derek Carr is the Derek Carr that was there that was damn near perfect against us, or was it the regular car crash Derek Carr? And that's going to be an interesting game because, of course, we have the Atlanta Falcons coming up uh, in a few weeks as well that are one and two. So they're they're fighting and scrapping to try and, you know, not get blown out by the New Orleans States in their division. We got, of course, uh, Cincinnati. And who would have thought that Cincinnati with Joe Burrow would start out 0-3, but they are looking completely inept right now going against the Carolina Panthers. You can't even look at the Carolina Panthers game and say, that's a gimme as bad as Cincinnati has played. So, you know, another one of the top three play players in the NFL not doing very good right now. We've got the Rams and the Chicago Bears. Um, the Rams not having the start of the season that they wanted. They're one and two. They need this game. The Bears trying to turn the narrative around. Minnesota, surprisingly, with Sam Darnold. Is Sam Darnold now all of a sudden a great quarterback? You know, that's now doing great things, going against Jordan Love, coming back with the Green Bay Packers, his first game back, 3-0, and 2-1. and one. Are these the two dominant? at teams in the NFC right now because it kind of looks like it at the moment it, it, it's it's crazy and if you got, of course got the Houston Texans getting what essentially is now a bye week will Trevor Lawrence the second highest paid player the second highest paid player in the NFL actually start or will that guy get benched if you're Carson Wentz, you got to feel pretty good about what's happening with Trevor Lawrence because now you don't look like you ripped off more money than anybody else. That's going to be an interesting one. One that I'm definitely really want to watch really hard today at 1 o'clock is the Steelers and Indianapolis because with the Steelers and Indianapolis game, you know, and Indy's not really that good. I want to know, are the Steelers that good? The Steelers are 3-0. and Their defense has been kicking ass, but I don't know that they've necessarily been playing against offensive juggernauts. They're the number one rated uh, defense on scoring and yardage thus far. Their offense isn't quite good. It isn't that good. It's like 24th. Now, Justin Fields is not asked to do everything. He's two TDs, one interception. We'll see what we see with that game. But that game is going to be interesting because we will be playing them next week. Denver and the Jets. Denver getting up off the mat, getting a big win this past week. The Jets, of course, now with Aaron Rodgers playing. Are they the the heir apparent to Kansas City? I I don't know, but right now they're two and one and could be three and one by the end of the day. And of course, we have to have our meltdown camp. Philadelphia <coughs> excuse me. Banged up, battered and bruised Josh Huff literally deleting everything he has on all of his social media of Eagles paraphernalia seemingly he's out the door will he be active today well we'll find out and this is a case of are the Eagles a good team getting the win last week against New Orleans in the Superdome their defense played outstanding their offense not so much is Kellen Moore the issue is Nick Sirianni the issue is Jalen Hurts the issue? Is it just that the Eagles are an issue? We'll find out. Then we got the Commanders, of course. The Commanders going to Arizona, um, where they're the underdog, even though they're 2-1 and one right now, having beaten uh, one last week and, of course, beating the Giants and things. Are, are we only going to be in the hype train here with, of course, Dan Quinn? Don't know on that one, although my dad is taking Arizona and giving up the points. San Francisco, the 49ers, get Debo Samuels back today, going against New England, which has been playing tough, but just does not have the horses. Another key game. If San Francisco happens to lose that one, you know, that gives us some breathing room without a doubt. Um, that's a key game for us. If they win, well, they hold serve with us, and that means that game that we play against each other is that much more important not to lose. Kansas City, um, Kelsey, 
Kelsey has not been really good and into the offense. Has he been Taylor Swift? Uh, but Kansas City is 3-0 against the Chargers that have had a much hurt Justin Herbert. I was remembering a few years ago when people were talking about how great Justin Herbert was, and he got the bag of money and has not seemed to be that good since then. We've got the Cleveland Doodoo Browns against the Raiders that beat Baltimore. That one is going to be one of those snooze fest ones for me. Um, Cleveland, wow. Deshaun Watson, you talk about stealing money. That guy really stole some money. And then, of course, the big game to finish the week will be Baltimore going against the Buffalo Bills that are 3-0. and Josh Allen right now seems to have the inside track at MVP. Baltimore got up off the mat, of course, kicking our teeth in uh, the week before. So those are all the matchups that we're looking at uh, today and tomorrow and seeing what's going to be what and who's who. Um, I can't wait to uh, see some of these games and things. But what I want to do uh, as we get ready for game day, and we'll be live here in uh, about an hour and a half, um, is I want to revisit what they said about the Cowboys game going into the Giants and so on and the storylines that ESPN had games all weekend long. Let's do a week four watch J Mac Sunday night. What are you watching for Bills versus Ravens? Derrick Henry, was that just a fluke, or is this who this Baltimore Ravens offense is? Can they give him the ball off enough where he can go dominate a football game and allow Lamar Jackson to be Lamar Jackson? Eagles and Bucks, Dan Orlovsky, and two banged-up football teams. What are you watching for in that game? Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter was the reason why the Eagles beat the New Orleans Saints. Can he be the reason why... The Eagles beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers pass protection, bottom three, bottom four in the NFL right now. Jalen Carter can dominate and take over this football game and lead this team to a win at defensive tackle in the NFL. He's going to need to because they have no one playing offense for that team <laughs> right now. And then Kmart, Cowboys Giants at MetLife tonight. What are you watching? Uh, the, the unit that Micah keeps talking about. The time for talk is over. Micah's talked hmm. about everything, and I'm wondering if guys are listening. This defense, can, it's the Giants offense, but at the same time, the, the Cowboys defense has not shown up in a big way this season. We need to see it. So listen, I have at times been accused of being prone to hyperbole. You? But I do not think <laughs> it is overstating it to say the Cowboys season is on the line tonight. Look at their schedule. After this game, they go to Pittsburgh, they get the Lions, they go to San Francisco, they go to Atlanta. You tell me they're going to win more than two of those four games. If you lose tonight, you can lose six or seven in a row. That's what I'm saying, Danny. Mm. I mean, mm. I, they, I, I believe they could get buried tonight. I think sure. if, if you can have a must-win game week four, I think this is a must win game for the Cowboys. Oh, there's no question about it. And we've talked so much about the Cowboys' defense this season. Yeah. No offense sets their quarterback up for failure more than the mm. Cowboys do right mm. now with Dak Prescott. They set him up to play poorly. The, the couple things that you want to do, one, run the football, they can't. Two, play action the football. No team gets their star receiver the, it, less involved than the Cowboys. CeeDee Lamb at the bottom of the screen, safety drops down to the middle. Throw it to CeeDee, look at his body language. Why am I not getting the football? This, this is the one that drives me crazy, on the left half. CeeDee is up top by himself. Just running in a straight line. Mm -hmm. He's open. Well, they don't throw it to him. Mm -hmm. No way that they would just have the ball on the left hash and, and put CD up top by himself, standing still, and just run a straight route again, right? No, no, no. They, they don't throw him the ball again. And then there's no way that you would go again and just have him run a straight line. They don't get him the football in mm -hmm. Dallas. That's the biggest problem well, right now. They again, did I'll go this back to week. This. The easiest ways to help quarterbacks, I don't care who they are, to play well. One, run the football. They don't and can't. Two, use motion. They don't and can't. Three, use play action. They don't and can't. Mm. Four, run screen passes. They don't. I mean, look. It's crazy. They're bottom five in some of these categories. No team sets their quarterback up to play poorly more than Dallas does with Dallas. I want to go back to that tape because you know I'm fascinated by the I mean, C.D. Lamb last year was the most targeted receiver in the NFL. You know where he is right now? 
way lower on that list. Is, is that a, I mean, where, where, I don't 41st. know. 41st. 41st. Okay, there you have it. And there are only 32 teams. So my, my question to you is this. Um, is, is that a function in any way of all the time he yeah. missed? Like he wasn't there, training camp wasn't there, preseason comes in mm -hmm. late for, with a contract and all that? I think so. He's is, on is the field. That, yeah, he's on the he's field. On so then what is it? Why are they – last year they force-fed I mean, the ball. Gre Greeny, the answer is the offense is boring. The, the offense schematically well, – might be more exciting if they threw the ball to see <laughs> the <lands>. but, <laughs> but, you know, so that's why I wanted the tape to show it's on the left hash. Yeah. When the ball's on the left hash and you put him all the way out there by himself – it feels like they're disconnected from the play more often than not, especially when they're fully extended. You yeah. know that yeah. it's a long throw for the quarterback. If you think about what teams Houston does with Nico Collins, the Kansas City Chiefs do with Rasheed Rice, the Vikings do with Justin Jefferson, those guys are so much closer to the football in, in different splits than CD is. It's more of a scheme thing than him missing time. What's so amazing to me is as you show that, he is split all the way out there. You show the safety on the opposite hash. Sometimes you would think maybe they put him out there to try to see and dictate what the defense is going to do because if you're playing the Cowboys, you want a safety over top of CD Lamb. They're not doing that. Right. So once you put him out there, they're not going to send extra help. You're like you wasting to, him out you there. You have to throw the ball to him somehow. Which is why you Motion saw, him do something. Which is why you saw CD Lamb Yes. frustrated on the sidelines because throw me the ball and I don't I don't when I looked at the Cowboys you talk about Greeny you said they're just they're boring you, Dan, you said it, the mm -hmm. offense is boring we weren't saying it was boring with Kellen Moore we weren't saying it was oh boring my god I don't, I, I don't seriously and it, it, here's the thing Dak also talked now we're trying to bring back Kellen last oh, okay. game, guys have to run the right run the route properly they yeah, need yeah. to be and and a lot of ears perked up like what is he what, who is he referencing? So the time miss might be a factor. I'm completely confused I'm by not. what you're telling me. Okay. It, are you telling me? Because I, I work with Randy Moss now on Sundays. Yes. And Randy Moss always tells me, man, the top receivers, doesn't matter what the defense is, doesn't matter what the coverage is, oh. doesn't matter, getting off the bus, you're double covering me, I'm going to find a way to get my catches. Yes. And, and C.D. Lamb falls in that category. So you're telling me they themselves are scheming him out of their offense? Absolutely. Paying him especially, all that money? It doesn't make sense. Absolutely. Especially early on in football games. Especially to start games, Greeny. And the second thing is this. Almost half of his routes are just straight lines. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know, go routes or stop routes. There's, mm -hmm. there's very little lateral or horizontal movement. Yeah, they're... It's not that I don't think there is this. It, um, intentional well, they definitely did a little bit better this out, week. But there is a, a not intentional phasing him in. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that. How much of offenses when you go out there is it on certain plays you're moving receivers in certain spots? So a guy like Ceedee Lamb typically could be an off the ball receiver, but when we run this route, we want him into the boundary. Does that go on play after play? Oh, absolutely. And watch tonight with the other team. We'll get Neighbors. into that with Malik Neighbors. <laughs> They're going to move. Like if you watch. How did Malik um, when I was with the too? Lions and we had Calvin Johnson, we would always put Calvin Johnson into the short side of the field or the boundary. And I'd run out of the back of the end zone. Because one, it's the shorter throw. Two, then that really forces a defense because then they have Dictate to play over the do. top and it creates options in space for other people. So they're basically saying, CD, you are just an X part of the one of 11 rather than the focal point of yeah. the offense. I, I'm, I'm completely... I'm baffled by this. We're going to talk about it mm -hmm. more as we go because it seems to me if there's one thing I'm doing if I'm the Cowboys, considering the rest of their offense is so pedestrian, it's getting the ball to him <laughs> as much as they yes. possibly can. <laughs> People saying interesting things earlier this All right, week. We'll just leave it right there. So you've got the storylines for today and things for us to look for. We can relax for a moment knowing that we've got a week before we have to get back out on the field while everybody's out there fighting today hopefully good things will happen for the cowboys and we'll see if the cowboys make any moves uh with d law and micah parsons definitely looking like they're going to be gone probably for most of october not the way we want to start the month but it's the way we are going to start the month i'm mark holmes and i'll see you game time with our exclusive philly 500 meltdown cam peace out